Good morning. I want to talk about response direct. I know Andrew would have mentioned it at the October show, which I was unable to get to at the last minute. I was on my way, but I had to go back, so my apologies for that as well. <laughs> One of the things that we need to do with Riscoris is to show it to people who are not sitting in this room here today. It's lovely to have your support, and we all do appreciate it, even if we feel a bit distracted <coughs> and at times. But we want to try and have new people have a look at it. And this is a new world. People don't particularly, when they get a new piece of kit, sit down and read manuals. I've seen this. My daughter's here. She's on the door. She's taking the money and giving you your ticket. If I ask her, well, how do you think we do something? Off she goes to Google. Or she might say, hold up, I found this video on YouTube that uh, shows you how to do something. When I'm doing my work in the office, and someone comes up with a question with my office internet hat on that their web browser isn't working properly, I will quite often be quietly googling away uh, to ask a question so that I can help the customer. So this is a paper-based thing. Um, so a lot of the risk OS stuff, if you've been in risk OS for a long, long time, all of your information is up here, or you give a call to your not quite so local dealer, but one or three of us around, and we can answer your questions. We have the machines in front of us, and we can be hopefully be reducing the problems. But this doesn't help us in spreading the word and getting fresh new young people, or people that just haven't come across, not necessarily young, that haven't come across Riscos before, and they may now not even vaguely recall computers in schools, what was that? Uh, I'm from the time before I thought computers got into schools, and I never talked to people who didn't have able computers in schools at all, so we've gone over that generation that's in between. And Andrew and I have been saying with Riscos Direct, sorry, with Riscos Developments, uh, we've spoken to people about web browsers, there's a new version of virus, and Andrew will display that and talk to you about that in his talk. So at one o'clock if you want to catch up with the web browser. That's wonderful. But how do we get new people in? What can we do to achieve that? And last summer I had a very interesting phone call with Tom Williamson from Wi-Fi Sheep, who's an active partner with us in this cross direct, saying that he had an idea. So I travelled up to the Midlands to uh, have a a couple of hours talk with him, about six hours later I left. But I was really quite excited. It was interesting to hear what he'd said to me. Um, some of it was, oh, don't really want to hear that. It didn't feel comfortable. But that's good. We need to be out of our comfort zone as dealers to push for a mess, to make it more available. And this is what we've come up with, risk or start rates. Tom will be doing a series of how-to videos. He has his own YouTube channel. Uh, he's created one specifically that we share. He looks after it for us. He's doing all the work. He majored at university uh, in uh, TV and broadcasting and things like this. And he has the skills. We're live today. So uh, we are being streamed. But there is no audio. So if you say something rude about somebody, don't worry. The rest of the world is not going to hear about it. So, we, as Riscos Developments, we have said to Tom, right, we want a series of how-to videos. Basically, uh, a new version for people who are queued up to using YouTube and looking at things. So, since I've discovered it, I've gone, oh, I can find out about my new camera uh, and how this happens and reviews. We're doing the same with the manual. So, we would take bits of the manual and effectively Tom will say, you know, this is episode one, welcome to Discoveries. This is what it looks like, and I will take you through over the next nine, ten, I think we've got 11 or so episodes booked to do this. Um, and it's going to be explained. But to do that, what, what do we use as the example? 
So this is what Ruskov Direct is. It's a flavor of Risk OS, nothing drastically different. It still has system, blink system, resources, all the things that you all know are hidden away in blink boot that we won't talk about. But it's, it's got drawer, it's got edit, it's got all the usual things, plus we we'll put things on there like Python. Uh, there is a programming, because the idea is to put this out to these new people, and one of the best places is the Raspberry Pi Jams. I'm booked to go to two in March, and while I'm there, anyone that is new to Risk OS that says, oh yeah, I heard you talk for 10 minutes just now. I wouldn't mind trying that. I'm quite happy to give them free of charge, courtesy of the Riscos developers, a Riscos Direct micro SD card. They can plug it into their pipe when they get home, and away we go. So they've got something there, and we will talk about the fact that if you go onto YouTube, you will be able to find out how to do this and how to work it. I think what I want to do is let you see Riscos Direct. So, I have here a Raspberry Pi. It has our Riscos Direct card. Obviously, it's not connected to the internet. We're not going to do anything like that. But um, we will plug it in. And you can see what the users will see when they first turn this on. Now, the very first time that it's actually run. We have a little obey file which will delete itself, so this is a brand new SD card that's uh, in here. And it just puts up a little disclaimer, which we have to have for the usual reasons that uh, you know, if you're going to use this XYZ, uh, nothing particularly bad, but uh, we have to have that to keep it away. So there we are, there is the documents disclaimer. That's the only time that it will be seen. The text file is on, that's the first time it comes up, they can have a read, and then when they're finished, if they can work it out, they can, we can click on it and get rid of it, but hopefully they will have seen, or they will be watching that YouTube video, or someone will be talking about it. Uh, on the uh, backdrop, we've got function keys, mouse shortcuts, because we're talking to people that might have a Mac or might have a PC, and they don't know that the middle mouse button is menu, and that you can right adjust click, uh, and you obviously left select click, that's not too bad. Most people know that. It's fairly simple, but we felt that that would be a, just a good way, a good reminder. Obviously, it looks a lot nicer when it's on a proper monitor in front of you and on the projector here. So, really, for anyone who's used Risk OS before, you know what this is. And that's really the introduction that we wanted. We make more use of the pinboard than uh, a normal uh, download from the World Website, that's for instance. Because again, that is going to chime in with the videos that Tom Williamson is going to be doing for us. Uh, and as he goes through, he will use more and more of that. But we've got Python 3 on there. There's also Python 2.7. That's in a folder inside. <coughs> As you can see, normal type of structure that uh, you gentlemen are used to seeing. Slightly different, maybe, when you go through. But we have a programming folder here. At basic C charm. Drawgen, Dr. Wimp, GPIO, Message Mom, PHP, Python, Risk Lure, Sorcery, uh, a toolbox, and Utils. Now, some of that you might don't know what's going to go on inside it, so don't ask me to explain. You know my usual excuse. I'm not technical enough for that. Uh, but with, uh, in conjunction with these videos that are going out and the fact that we're going to be giving this away free to new Risk OS. What we hope will become the Risk OS users, we're prepared to take that chance. We want to excite people, we just want them to sort of go, oh, so there is an alternative to whatever they've been looking at. Uh, and the last thing, especially on the Pi, of course, is that Risk OS itself 
is blindingly fast. I keep on getting told this by people who deal with the Linux side of it. It's blindingly fast compared to Linux. Brilliant. So hopefully we've also made it attractive as well. Any questions for you? Yes? I, I personally see there's a slight contradiction in terms of what you're doing, in terms of you're trying to get other users in. And one of the first things they're going to want to do is to access the internet. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious to know whether you're going to hold back RS and OWB, or whether you're going to essentially run the risk of having just um, NetSurf on this and run the risk that you finally get these people to try it. <coughs> it's no good for internet browsing. And having tried it, they then go away for another 20 years. So I wonder how you're going to handle that tension. Auto browsers is on this particular release. Uh, I probably can't see that. So we've got a lot of browse on there at the moment. Obviously, as soon as we feel comfortable with some of the other browsers, it's a it's a balancing act. Because if we give them a, a browser that is absolutely atrocious and locks the machine up or just disappears on the screen, that will put them off most probably more than if they go to a website and it doesn't render properly. If it renders a little bit or semi-good, but again, one of the things that will be explained, and that's the, that's the joy of being able to have someone, if you like, as a, a spokesperson or a front man on the YouTube videos, is he will hopefully be able to manage some of the deficiencies in a way that we're being honest about them, and we can say, yes, you know, we've got two new browsers under development, and we're pushing those along, as I said, find out about Iris from Andrew uh, later on today. He will show you where we've got with that. Uh, as soon as that's available, we will make it freely available. Because it'll be freely available to all of you guys anyway. It'll be freely available to everybody. So there won't be a charge. What we are hoping to do, this will also be available for download from the Resource Development's website. I'm hoping to have that sorted for sometime during the next week, we just ran out of time with the storms and the all the work, getting the SD cards done, organising the exhibitions, my fault. So, uh, well, I just couldn't quite get everything done in time. But when it is available, there will be a simple form to fit in. Uh, we're not gathering loads of information from people, we just want name, email address. And the reason for this is, when we do a pack, We've had a few people say, well, what games are there on there? There are one or two we put on here to start with, but we can do a featured games pack that we're getting be free to download, and that's where we will use the email address. But from our perspective, it would be very nice for me to be able to come back here next year after this launch and say that you know, one or two people, or maybe 10 or 20, or maybe a couple hundred people, have downloaded risk cost direct and you know we know that because we have names and we have the email address there as well. If that answers your question. Does anyone else have a question for me? Yeah. Sorry? Because the programming people told me that we ought to <laughs> and there, there are, I believe there are some things in Risk OS that work fine on 2. Python 2.7, but don't work as well on the version of Python 3. Well, the thing is, the whole 2 series is being added. So, you'll be typing the But Python 3 um, has only been made available, I believe, in the last three or four months to Risk OS. So it's not quite the stable, not quite as many features. So again, for the time being, it's better that we have both of them there. Um, and that will be explained again as I'm standing here doing to you on a YouTube video. Tom is very good at that. Um, if, if you've ever seen any of his Wi-Fi sheet where he takes computers apart, puts them back together, refurbishes them, and does all sorts of things, it's, it's uh, really quite interesting. So we're asking him to do Obviously, we've seen the pre-release version of episode one, or instruction manual one, um, and we'd be very pleased with the way he delivers it and the way he explains it. And 
close to you. You see that a lot, a lot better when you're looking at your device. And of course, YouTube will work on mobile phones, it can work on laptops, any normal kit that you would expect uh, a teenager upwards to have access to. So, um, there, yeah, there are, there are lots of things on here that may appear to be an inconsistency, but sometimes we're trying to hedge our bets, trying to make it available. Uh, at one point, someone said, we will wider, we put in every single piece of risk of software that's freely available now onto here. Well, I think we've used about two gig uh, of actual programs and information on here, as it stands. There are a couple of videos on here to play, so it shows the risk of videos as well. Um, we want more functionality to come. Some of that will come with the new browsers. And, and yes, we could put every single piece of software on there. We, I think we would like probably double the size, possibly. Um, but then you're expecting someone who doesn't know Risk OS at all to browse around and work out what all these programs are. And they might stumble upon some things and think they're wonderful, but they might equally as well miss uh, what you or yourself or this person here thinks is the, the best thing that uh, Risk OS has ever done. So we don't want to muddy the water by having too much choice. Again, it's a balance. Uh, we're hoping that we've struck the right sort of one there. Yes, that, that's very much on the and idea. We can move that then, I guess, to answer the real question, because those people are shipping Wi Fi now. When Wi Fi or enhanced network is going to make it, that would be the Yes, as updates come out to um, Risk OS that benefit all of us, we will make those available either as an update pack or a new image that you can burn onto an SD card. I mean, we, we've set the size of the SD card to be at 7 gig, so that it will go on an 8 gig card, and above even on a really cheap, horrible uh, 8 gig card, we hope that it will format to at least 7 gig. Uh, we've had some instances where cards just don't format at all, but there we are, that's the, the work we live in. Thousands of things to choose from, but sometimes not all of them work. Um, but yes, it's very much an ongoing project. It can't stop with this. Um, I've worked very hard with a couple of other people in the last two weeks. We've uh, done some 1 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning jobs to, to get this as close as we can. And I'm sure there will be things that we've missed or that we haven't quite spotted. But we've done our best. But it doesn't stop. I don't relax after this week. We're already talking about... Um, uh, we had an email in from a games designer who has gone around and purchased an awful lot of Risk OS games, and very nice email out to the blue from him saying, Oh, yes, uh, well, if you'd like to include it, every single one of my games, I would be more than happy for it to go on the Risk OS direct uh, image. So we don't have time this time, but we will make that available like, probably in a month or two's time. And if we can, every few months, if it's possible, we would like to email these people and say, Right. If you're interested, we've now got this available to, to you. So that we can encourage people to come back and check on the website. So I'll have to keep the website up to date. And uh, we'll have to work at that and be good with it. We'll have to be good at uh, emailing out to people. But we will do our best. You never know, we might have to call out to somebody and say, look, we've got too much, Andrew and I can't cope and see if we can find someone. I broke my daughter in today, so she's looking out to the stands and just taking your ticket money today so that I could be prepared to do this. Uh, so yes, it's very much a ongoing project that will change when Wi-Fi is available, when better networking is available, when the browsers are available. These will all come on stream. We will give it a test. Um, I was very, oh, I don't know. To, I heard something from Rural. I'm sure they'll tell you about that later on. That's a bit First. Can you uh, speak a bit more about how you're going to keep up to date? Because after a month or so, there's going to be user data on the flash disk, so you can't just reflash it. 
and people are used to having updates coming to them, they're not used to going forward. Right. Well, you've got updates on programs you can install. You have a package manager that's also been installed on there. And for other things, I am sure we're going to have some interesting discussions about how we're going to do that. But if there is a, when a pack comes out, I'm used to doing this as all things internet. When I send out a router, I will send out a PDF uh, with an email to a customer with instructions, you know, here's your username, here's your password, these are the boxes that they go into. Uh, Andrew and I both have reasonable skills in writing manuals, but yes, there's most probably going to have to be a, a PDF of this is how you do this update. Some of them are going to be more complicated than others. Um, and what we may even do is we may have to say, well, look, to take the full advantage of this, you wouldn't have to burn a new image on a new micro SD card, but take your old micro SD card with your data on it, uh, wherever you placed it. Now, that can be a very interesting one. Where do I put my documents? Where do I put my work? And that's down to every individual. But you can put that into a USB card reader, plug it into the pine, and then copy it onto there. Hopefully, we will try to avoid that one. But it may be unavoidable, in which case, we'll keep the old one there. We will keep the new image there. So there will be you know, quite a selection as time goes by that you can choose from. So if someone goes to a boot fair in two years' time and picks up a Raspberry Pi 2B uh, for 50 pence, because they may have seen the values, because they recommend they being brands on the internet, then they will have a version that will at least work on there. Because again, going forwards, there may be the possibility at some point uh, I know that the Raspberry Pi 1 now, people are already talking about it, sort of dropping off the usability scale, that, well, it doesn't do this, it's a little bit slow, and it's not being thought of to be supported on the Raspberry Pi Foundation. I, they still do lots and lots of stuff. But um, things will move on as machines come through and change. But we'll do our best to make it as simple and as easy as possible. We might have to do another YouTube tutorial, specifically, possibly a, a, a short one. Uh, we'll pay for that with Tom and ask him to explain visually, as well as saying, oh, well, by the way, there is a PDF, but it's not that in there. Yeah. For some time, I've been able to go off to a buy a lesson card, 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 Is this to complement that, or is this for pacing? This is to compliment. We're, we're not at. Uh, I have heard a rumour that somebody says that we're at war with rule. I don't think it's quite that bad. I mean, there are things on the rule um, SD card, not on this. That's what I'm trying to get out. Um, not that I'm aware because we started off, our base point was the rule SD card. It does really base it. It doesn't, it doesn't. Um, I was talking to Steve this morning. Yeah. And he was talking about they want to make this available as an image on the Royal website, mm. as well as theirs. Ours is a more fully featured. We put more time and more effort into it in a different way. Royal are theirs who go to the repository. Yes, they also have their own release, and that's been the only one that's been available for quite some time. And at the moment as well, it's based on the old 524, which doesn't have the open source, it's not the open source version. This is based on the open source version, so it has all the right licensing. The old 524 really should, um, as far as I'm concerned, as risk cost developments, that should not be available anymore, but we've had nothing else there. What I'm hoping the group will do is that they will do their own base 5.26, but I'm scheduled to uh, go up to Cambridge and have a cup of coffee with uh, Rule and have a chat about going forwards and doing things. So all of these sort of conversations go on in between the shows and outside. So I don't get it. I mean I've got this, what would then motivate one page of five groups where apply the rule? I don't know. Okay. Look, we did not design this to put rule out of business. Again someone has said that apparently in part. I'm only hearing any local things here. I've not heard anyone say this myself. Um, that, that's not, but as I say, rules mandate is to look after the sources. The guys of rule all have day jobs that have, that, you know, they're not uh, risk loss um, divas, for want of a word, sorry, I'm 
um, and they're very, very busy. And sometimes even when we ask them, oh, could you do something, it does take a little while. So if we put the efforts in there, and if we're all happy with what we're doing, then yes, it, it may very well replace it, and they may go, oh. So do please ask Steve that. I'd like to hear all these answers when I can uh, watch you back on the video later. Thank you.